Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the 13th of October, 2018. We have Jim in the room. He's back from Machu Picchu, and he's going to be talking about his trip. But to introduce who we have, we have Elisa, we have Catalin, excuse me, Christine, David, Don, Eva, Ian, Lucia, Reinhard, Sheer and Safira, and then myself. And then who do you have in your room, Jim? I have Angie and Barbara and Will and Erica and Ray. Did I miss anyone? Nope. Good. And we are expecting Alan as well, but okay. he is not here yet. So before we get started, I just want to remind everybody that today is a paid webinar, which means that if you are a member of Club Hukalo or the Hukalo Club, that means you get to be in the room here in this Google Plus room and to become a member of uh, Human Colony, which helps us support all of our activities. You can join for $10 a month and you always have access to the uh, paid webinars and some of the other wonderful things that we're doing. It helps support our channeling class, our Zoom rooms, our, our YouTube, all of the things that we pay for our website. So you can go to hukalo.org forward slash webinars and you can sign up if you're not a member. Also, if you're not a subscriber to this channel, go down into the corner and hit subscribe and that way every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification. And to, if you need a manual for everything that we're doing, everything that we're learning, you can go to amazon.com and download from the Galaxy with Love, the Lightworkers Handbook, a book written by Jim Charles and Max Rempel. It's a comp compilation of five years of channeling by Jim, and it gives an introduction to everything that a light worker really would need to know. So please check it out. You can download it as a book, but also as an audio file. So please be sure to check it out. It's gotten really good reviews. And if you have, if you have read it and you have a place to review, please write a review on there. Okay. I think that's everything. Oh, 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 I forgot one thing. <laughs> on Fridays, we have the channeling class. Ian, why don't you tell everybody about the channeling class? Sure. This is Ian, and every week, Friday at 4.30 Eastern time, we have a channeling class where a group of us get together who are have an interest in channeling, and we're, as a collective safe place, we're we come together as a group and we spend a couple of hours practicing our channeling, talking about different techniques uh, and learning from each other. And that happens every Friday and it's a, we're having a great time doing it. So you please, you're all, everyone is invited. It is free. Um, and you can look it up on Facebook under Hukalo Channeling Weekly Practice Group. And oh no, John. John Bailey is here. Oh, that's why I got the current chair. Okay, uh, is it time for the uh, the blessings? Yes, it is. And uh, we'll start with Safira. Then we'll go into your room. Okay. Okay. okay perfect. Go ahead, Safira. Okay. Help thank you. Yourself. <clears throat> Ashina kina hamala tu yo kishala emish zaba hashakoto i kachamala o shono hokoko i chila kapala i shakahalo koholo. Let the energies of the universe rest on you and let the light be part of your life. Do not block it out as if to say it does not matter, because without it you would be blind in many ways and would not be able to move forward. So embrace it and hold it as a beacon for your life. Thank you. Um, Barbara, go ahead. She has to come up here. Yeah, here comes Barbara. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that is the Kinata, 
In this day and age, there are those that are challenged and broken. Lift yourselves up. Understand that God wants you to be full and vital. Do not let the enemy win, but choose the power of God as your strength, and he will rise you up and give you what you need. Thank you. Will? Was it Will that was going next? One moment, please. Yes. Oh. Can you have a chair? I was... Oh, okay. Somebody took that one. Okay. Did you want to sit in the big chair? If I could, Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. We have Will. We have Alan here also. And so we're waiting for Will to do a blessing after that, after we get. Alan settled. Okay. Uh, after we get. Uh, there you go. Situated here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem. Okay. So we have a full house here today. Oh, wonderful. And a dog. And a dog. And a dog. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Will. Uriza te kutukushi ta an haskati ti arasata arasi hi wakawa na harsatari te ka arsa hakachit ko ona no isai ka arsa na achar sa hawata anti sa artu uri shishai ki arzi na arsat kashishayat arsa hukwa yata i harni te ka ari shika anata tira sa raud kawa ya harti te ka arsa na te kwa ya hukshachaya akarsa na na ari se kari te ko uhuji hura hanani te kari eskana na atisha yo ho hanana achicha e kana na wiya no hura anana akaskaya atichiko ya sukona ya sukohura ni hia sakanana asakahia chichikara wata sukohura nara ni hia takara shikashia ya ya hakwata nana akatiya sakara shashia yo yo huku ura hanahi ya risikahia chichikoya the events of today are moving us into the future in a vast way God is opening many doors and revealing many things to his people. He is talking and making sure that people understand that they must move forward and not remain idle. He is there to bring us into a light that is greater than we can possibly imagine. But remember, in doing so, there will be difficulties and challenges. But do not let them overcome you, but overcome them with the light that is within you, that the light that is part of all that is around. Let God shine brightly as your example and your vision. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Hello, we got even more. Wow. <laughs> You're going to need a bigger room. Chris came in. Oh, Chris meets. Uh, awesome. Hello, where many of you are here today. <laughs> okay. Um, I thank you for your blessings and everything. I'm going to actually talk a little bit about the Peru trip for a few right. minutes before we start. It was an amazing trip. Uh, there was a lot of information revealed. We have two of the people that were on the trip right here with us, Angela and Will, and they will help me tell a little bit about uh, what we experienced. Um, we were everywhere in Peru. We were at the Sacred Valley. We were at Machu Picchu. We were at Lake Titicaca. We were at the Stargate. We were at, uh, and we were together at times and we were separated at times, but it was all be, 
all in the perfect design of what had to happen for this to be the trip that it was. We had to experience certain things to learn. We had to experience certain things to understand ourselves in a way. And I think everybody knows what I mean by that. Um, it was not an easy trip, okay. but it was a valuable one for sure. Yeah. There was a lot of channeling that was done in different places. I have to tell you for myself, the very first part, the very first few days of the trip, maybe the first four or five, I was so out of sorts and the channeling was coming very difficult. I couldn't channel hardly at all. It was the energies were so uh, different there and it was very difficult for me to uh, get all the information out. In fact, I, I got some information out and there was more there, but I, I had to stop. So mm. this was the kind of beginning that we had. Although the information that came out was very valuable, but there will be more to come. We have to add to the information that was there because they were pouring in information. I just couldn't get it out. So that is part of the energies that we were dealing with down there and that we were uh challenged in many different ways did you did anybody want to talk about this did you no yes there's there's so much to talk about i know we, um, we're, it, to do a synopsis is not easy because there's so many the same things. Beings you normally channel or were you channeling beings? Your... we were channeling other beings I was channeling the Native American beings from that area, the shamans from that. One of them was called Kut Ek, and he was a being, a shaman from that area. I forget the name of the other shaman that we channel that I channeled. And also Ish was there, and also Elijah was there. And wow. so there was Elijah spoke twice, and Ish spoke once. Uh, and other uh, shamans spoke the rest of the time. Well, I, Will's very energetically affected when he goes places. So where you, <laughs> he's like the lightning rod of the group. So what was the, what was his experience in that? Were you? It was a very personal experience for me, as well as a, a group experience. And just connecting in with the energies was brought back past lives from the area, brought back information, um, various visions, uh, channelings. I have so many channelings that I didn't share with any of the group yet. Um, because since we were apart, we were apart for four days until we got together in Aguascalientes before going up to Machu Picchu. And um it was just interesting that the energy that was affecting them i at least were it was in one spot for a couple of days so that when they arrived that it was easy then to connect with them and and help everyone focus back on what's important on this mission and what is what is the energies that are available and allowing our joy to come through that that helps that energy come through and it helps yeah. the channeling and it helps appreciate what whatever the information is that needs to be shared in this now and whatever way that it came out and machu picchu was just absolutely epic yeah. Seeing Jim affected by the energies of Machu Picchu, seeing Angie affected by the energies of Machu Picchu, besides the altitude. The altitude was funny with both of them, but still, inside Machu Picchu, Jim wanted to channel everywhere. Yes. <laughs> the yeah. energy was just like every little rock had something to say in Machu yeah. Picchu. It was so yeah. interesting. Up there. My dad was a big lover of Machu Picchu, and I don't know if anyone knows this, but my dad used to put pyramids that he would um, construct. You know, my dad was very precise, and he would construct actual pyramids that were the precise 
dimensions of a real pyramid and his big love was Machu Picchu. So I was excited. Did you feel called? Was it a calling that you guys went there? Was it a decision? <laughs> what made you go there? I, cause I, I mean, everyone has their sort of pilgrim destination of where they feel called to, whether it's past life or, you know, activations that need to happen or whatever. So what was, there was reason? absolutely reasons to go there. The, there was absolutely reasons to go there. Uh, and the, we have that in the channeling sessions and they, the actual channeling sessions got better as the trip went on, as we acclimated to the energies and things, the channelings got better, but there was some very important ones at Machu Picchu. There was some very important things that came out there. And, um, I don't know if I should say what they were or not. What do you think? I think we need to still assimilate and still channel and, and still put things into the recordings. Yes. Is, is it still, are you still acclimating, I mean, not acclimating, but are you still getting sort of downloads uh, like reciprocal? Actually. Is that a word? Reciproc something. You, you're still getting them. <laughs> well, this is what happened is yeah. that I would do some channeling and, right. and I could get out, I got out as much as I could, but the information kept coming right. at that moment. It was still coming in it, and I was going, I, I can't get it out because the energies were so different for me. Uh, so I was like a little stifled, but the, the, the information still came and I still have it. Mm -hmm. But the first several times that I channeled, like in the Sacred Valley and then Machu Picchu, things were, the information was coming. I just, the energies weren't letting me say all of it. Right. And some, and even the, the, Beings that were coming through were seemed stifled to a to a certain extent. They had more information, and they they could have said more, but they felt that energy interference. So they left before all the information was out. But I still have it, and we have to add that to what we have. Right. So, but toward the end, later, everything became much easier. I got acclimated to all the things and. The later channelings are all complete, wow. but the earlier channelings are just rough. They were very rough for me, but they did get out. Some some very important information did get out, and was was part of part of the uh, what I would call our little documentary. So it's going to come out as a documentary, I think. There's a lot there. There's a lot of information. It's going to be sort of long. <laughs> if maybe everyone can say, including the, the what, what, how, how did it change you? What did you bring back? Did you meet yourself there? Did you remember? Did you find new information? What happened? Uh, for myself, I'll let everybody speak for themselves yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, but for myself, I felt that it was very necessary for me to be there, to do this and go there. But it was also a test and to let me know that there are challenges and that there is information that can be stopped through this these energies and processes. But it also was an amazing trip for me balancing out uh, what was in my in my spirit? Uh, what I would went there for? I felt very uh, happy about what came through. I had no idea what was coming through. I kept putting my faith in God and saying, "What? Okay, it's up to you. It's a I'm. I have no idea what you're going to be saying. So, um, but." It was a test of faith. It was a test of endurance. <laughs> the air altitude and uh, air was thin in many places. And even I couldn't sleep well in Puno because the air was so thin. I'd wake up going. <sighs> so and uh, walking up the mount side of the hills was uh, you got to the top and you just wanted to sit down for an hour. But yeah. we kept going. Yeah. But it was a great uh, trip of endurance, a great trip of information, 
and of spirit. It was a, a very spiritually enlightening place. Awesome. And there's just, I could go on for a long time, but I wanted that I want Angie to say something about it. Come on over. And then I want Will to say something about it. Hi, Andy. <coughs> it was just amazing for me. There were so many uh, challenges that were put in front of me. I, uh, I, I, I have lung issues, and when you are actually going to a place where there is not a lot of oxygen, I did bring a portable oxygen with me. Um, I fought it, but I did use it, but I fought it. Um, I, uh, I got sick. Uh, I got pneumonia while I was there. And um, so my challenges were, were physical challenges. And I really had to rely on my faith, my understanding of, I, I gathered the energies. I, the energies that I received from there is, is unbelievable. Um, it has actually changed me um, in, in a much greater way. It has built so much more on, on my understanding. I received visions. Um, uh, uh, it was just simply amazing. Wow. It did, I did have many tests and it did build on my strength and it, it did build on that. And so I think because of all the challenges, I think when it is gonna be coming, I think this was a, a understanding for all of us that we will be experiencing great challenges and, and, and great tests. So to really build on, on your, your commitment and understanding with God. Well, I have to say, Angie made it up the side of Machu Picchu, that sheer cliff, carrying, uh, doing uh, 18 pounds of oxygen. They mm -hmm. almost didn't let her carry that up, but it's a sheer cliff going up the side of Machu Picchu, and it was a miracle that Angie, with her oxygen, was able to make it. But when she got up there, it was fine, but it was a, a miracle to make it up those 1,200 Steps. Uh, very sheer steps on the side. I almost missed a step and I turned around and looked and I went, Oh my God, it's like straight down. <laughs> I, and I said, Good thing I did it. I did not lose my footing there because yeah. I would have taken about 10 people with me because <laughs> you'd have just fallen backwards and there would have been a bunch of people back there. So yeah. I was like, going, Thank you, God. And but he just let me realize you have to watch your stuff even better than you did before. So, yeah. uh, but it was a miracle with Angie in many places. But when it got to when we got to Cusco to go to Juliaca, she could not go any farther because they said to her, "You you can't do that. You you the oxygen is too thin there." So she had to go back to Lima, and Will went with her as he was our hero in many senses with um, Angie because he sacrificed going to Puno and, uh, but he still got his work done. So that was a beautiful thing. It was an amazing, amazing time. That's amazing how you're challenged with your limitations so that you can experience an expansion. And, you know, it was. Yeah. So you just Absolutely. have to be willing to show up and, even getting sick is like a purging and a you know, transformative physical experience. And yeah. Wow. Well, it was challenging for all of us mm. in, in many ways, in different ways. So yeah. it was to build us up in the, the ways we needed to be built at that time. And so we accepted the challenge and moved forward and God brought through a lot of information, so it was good. That's perfect. Thank you for sharing. And you will, oh, Will has to share still. Yeah, just Will. I went Will to share because he's very uh, articulate and he can tell <laughs> Articulate, yes. Um, <laughs> gee, I don't know what to share. Um, it's, we went to uh, the Temple of the Condor was really amazing in Machu Picchu. And um, 
and the Temple of the Sun was amazing. We got to see, um, there were certain things that Spirit said that you need to record it right now and put it on YouTube right now. So we did those types of things and we did other things like this is a channeling that's for the documentary. Um, helping Jim and Angie up the stairs was difficult because Jim can't see. And <laughs> Angie can't breathe. <laughs> um, so it was uh, the, the blind leading the, the breathless. The, yeah, the breathless. The, whatever, yeah. Was the, yeah. Yes. The the it was an interesting uh, time because they did have to really help me with uh, uh, the footing. It's very rugged there. Everywhere you go in in uh, in the sites, there is rugged footing. And so I had someone helping me, and they had someone helping Angie. So it was like uh, a crippled tour. So. <laughs> Did you but, feel like uh, you went back in time? I mean, did you feel that sort of shift of, you know, where? Yes, in some places. Absolutely. Yeah. But you also felt the energy of what was happening there. When we got to certain places like the Condor Room, the energy there was amazing. More was happening there than anybody could have possibly imagined. Mm. It was not just what they said it was, but it was much greater than that. And we saw it immediately. And everybody was going, oh my God, this is, this is built just the way that it is for a reason. And, and it, it was very evident what the reason was. I just, I just, share got, that with you. I just what? got, I just got this through, and and so can you confirm this? Did you get there? Did you have the thing where did you hear we've been waiting for you? Has was that were you welcomed? Was was there that, was actually that was, that just came through to me. Actually, yes, but not in those words. Yeah, they said it in Spanish. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was I going. What did they know. say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they did welcome us. They yeah. did. When, yeah. especially in Machu Picchu, we were we were welcomed. Once we got to Machu Picchu, I felt the welcoming. Before okay. that, it was it was sort of difficult. Yeah, cool. Because we had to be there exactly at that time. Yes. And we've had so many synchronicities. I mean, besides getting the plan, you must be there at the full moon in September. Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, <laughs> But then, once we got there, it happens to be the 77th year that it's open. Okay, 77 is a master number, the master right. number of perfection. Yeah, see? Uh, <laughs> um, and just being there in, in the resonant energies of the full moon and with Kuhutek. Kuhutek, yes. Kuhutek. And uh, yeah, he was amazing. And so was, uh, I forget. I forget the name of the other one. Yeah, so. But he had a longer name. <laughs> he, had, he had a longer name, exactly. Julia Kalerun or something. But he was interesting, amazing too. Yes, and there's so many channelings that Jim has to do because there's certain places that Jim couldn't make it. It's just the stairs were too steep or whatever. And or there were too many people around to channel in that area. Right. But they were giving us information about the area. And so we will add to the the documentary he filmed it and i will talk over it and tell you what they said about that area okay. so there's a couple places like that yes mm -hmm. yes the condor room is one of them yes there was just so many people there there was no way to channel there but the information just was pouring in and i was sitting there going well this area here was what so um it was the information was coming they just said photograph it uh video it and we'll and we'll give you the information to speak over it so that's how some of this will happen yeah wow well, that sounds really exciting it is there's some very exciting information and i think it was a thrilling for me so. yes and we didn't think we would get much information in uh cusco but we got a ton of information at some of the four sacred sites that are up just above Cusco, uh, Kenko, Saxiopaman, um, 
and there's two others, but we spent most of our time in Kenko. And once we got there, we understood why. <laughs> it was, uh, there was a Stargate there. Okay. And um, they have not recognized it as a Stargate, but it is a Stargate for sure. Absolutely. Oh, so wow. um, it's really cool. Maybe it's better if they don't recognize it as a Stargate. <laughs> well, it was actually built just like the other Stargate, except it, it was um, not as big. It, it's a smaller one, and they didn't have the the indentation in the in the rock. But you could see where the technology was. You could see the shape of it. You could see uh, the striations on the rock where energy were was uh where there was energy uh on the rock that changed the rock a little bit because of the energy so it was very interesting mm. i like what will said about the rocks information yes the rocks hold a lot of information <laughs> yes that, that's an understatement yes yeah. they did did you, did you bring Absolutely. any rocks back yes we did <laughs> I I brought some from outside of Machu Picchu because there was really no rocks inside of Machu Picchu. Everybody picked all the rocks out of Machu Picchu. Uh, but <laughs> outside of Machu Picchu, yeah. there were some rocks. Yeah, very cool. Oh. Very cool. Anything else you want to share about it? Or oh, what do we yeah, see? This is, this is um, a crystal from the Stargate up near Puno. Uh, the Lake Titicaca. There's, I brought some of these crystals back. Uh, they are interesting and uh, amazing to me. So I love it. Very cool. All right. All right. So I think we can start channeling now. Maybe. Excellent. <laughs> do you want me to read the list of requests again or do you, do you have I, I remember some. Yeah, sorry, that's me. Oh. <laughs> I thought there was they a bug. to do something. Oh, I thought it was a bug. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Oh. Okay. Pretty... okay, I remember. Uh, I'll tell you who I remember. Michael, uh, Archangel Michael. I remember Pan. I remember uh, Dolores Cannon. I remember Ish. I remember Elijah. I remember... Uh, Grindel? I didn't remember Grindel. Someone in this room requested Grindel. Okay, well, Grindel. Um, I remember. Ishim, Ishim of the Angel Collective. Ishim of the Angel Collective. And the Dream uh, Lords from Sheer. Dream Lords. And then the last was Alan Watts. Alan Watts. Okay. 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 Let's okay. see who comes through. Thank you for listening. I hope we didn't bore you too much. No, I think it's exciting. Thank you. So, um, but that was our experience, and I think it was important to share a little bit of it with you so that you'll be understanding when the documentary comes out what we were talking about. But we <laughs> will do a lot of uh, talking about what we were experiencing at the times when we did these channelings and these the light, the sun, information, and all that. Light codes. Yes. Yeah, the light codes. <laughs> can never remember to say light codes. I always see the sun. Okay, very good. Um, I'm going to do a little meditation. Is there anything else before I go under? No, just <laughs> water. We shall perform surgery. Yes, yes. Don't take out on anything important. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. You go after me. <laughs> I am Elijah. Welcome, Elijah. Greetings. I will not be here long today, but I wanted to tell you this. It is now time to prepare yourself spiritually for the future. 
I know that you have been preparing all along in some ways, but gird yourself up with strength and courage at this time. There are things coming that you will need to move through rather quickly so that you may be successful in your movement toward your mission's goal. I know that sounds a little negative, but it is not. What I am saying to you is this, the light will be your strength and power and courage. And so make sure that you are fully walking within it so that you may be able to do this that you need to do in these coming year, this coming year. I am here to tell you that God is merciful. God is graceful and gives you what you need at the times that you need it. So understand his power, his wisdom, his love, and his glory, even as you move forward. Make sure that you give him praise and thanks for bringing you through these future times, for it will be somewhat difficult, but it will not be impossible. It will not be impossible. And keep your eye on his light, his faith, his understanding, and address yourself as a child of God. Let everyone know that you believe and that he is part of who you are. Make him part of your example. Make him part of who you wish to be because he is building who you are all the time. He is perfecting you. He has put his soul inside of you, that fire which is him, that creative portion of him that has all your uniqueness that you need to be who he wants you to be. And guess what? He is going to bring it into a greater light at this time because you are the leaders. You are the ones that are ahead of those that need to still awaken. So remember that. You are leaders. You are the ones that will be guiding others. You are the ones that will be examples for others. You are the, the ones that people will say, yes, I see the light in him or her or them. You may be part of a group that is enlightened or is part of a group that will be a leader in this movement forward. But remember this, and this is clear at this time, the ascension cannot be stopped. You are on your way. This species is on its way to the next step of enlightenment, of evolution, whatever you want to call it. It's many things at once. It is not just one thing, and that's what can be so confusing to many people. They'll say, oh, the ascension is this. Oh, the ascension is that. It's all these things put together. Do not see that ascension means bringing up in all ways, not just one way or another. But it is a movement toward God that never stops. But it has points along the way where there are great changes. Do you understand that? So there is a great changes coming. And many of you say, oh, it's coming tomorrow. It's coming next week. It's coming on Thursday. But do not be caught up in when it is coming. It is coming in God's time. It is coming when God wants it and knows it to be the best time for all, not just for you, not just for your family, and not just for the group of friends that you have. And not just for a United States and not just for Europe, but for all peoples that are here. You must understand the purity of thought that goes into that, that all people are ready at to, to move at some point. But right now is not that moment. But God is working with the world. As you see, he's bringing about many different things that he is working with Gaia to, to purge her. He is working with humanity to purge them. 
There are many emergencies right now. And people are waking up to their spiritual side because of these emergencies. They are saying, you know, God helped me through that. I know that God did. And now I am awake to him a little more clearly. And he's going to continue to do this. He works with everyone on the planet. And you'll say, but there are some places where uh, emergencies may not occur. But there, that is not true. Emergencies will occur everywhere. And people will wake up and help their friends and neighbors and help their community when they feel led to do so. And this will change them as it has changed many already. It will continue to move forward in this way. And some of you may have said to yourself while I am speaking right now, yes, I have changed because of certain situations around me. Bring it into a positive light. Do not make it a negative thing. Make your change part of God's change because he's teaching you something. He's bringing something to your foresight. He's bringing something to your soul that was not there before, and you may not appreciate it at first. It may be difficult at first, but once you learn the lessons of God, you never forget them. You never forget them. Ask those that have learned the lessons of God, and they will tell you they are indelible marks on their souls and in their systems and on their person and have made changes within them. Thank you for listening to me. If there is any questions, I will take them. But I do not want to be here all day because I know there are others that seek information and i would not want to, to hesitate uh or delay them from coming i don't see any questions in our room if there's any questions in your room yes. then i will move on and bring the next one to you blessings to all of you blessings thank you and be enlightened remember Bring that light of your soul up. Bring that up into your person in a greater and greater way all the time. For the light is in you. The light is in you. You must shine it out. Do not let everything collapse on you. But shine out your energy. Shine out God's energy. Do not let the world's energy fall on you and darken that light much love much love thank you Uh. All right. I am Dolores Cannon. Someone has requested that I come. Hi, Dolores. I asked for you to come. And why is that, dear? Uh, I've been watching your videos, and I think they're wonderful. Thank and you. I'm Barbara. And I was wondering if you can give us any more information about the Ascension or that how's it going to affect all of us? We pretty much already know, but if there's any other information you can give us. More information. Yes. I'm coming, it's coming in clearer now. But let me tell you this. Um, when I was doing my past life regressions, there were times when after the regressions would happen, something would speak to me from the individuals. And it was their souls, because it did come through as a group, because the soul is connected to the oversoul. Do you understand that? Your soul 
when it speaks, is connected to all those other souls that it is also in communication with. And when these souls would speak to me, they would give me information about the future, about what was happening in my own life. And it was amazing to me that they would come through other souls. But those souls also knew my soul because my soul was also connected to theirs. Does that make sense to you? And so they are telling me, and they continue to tell me that people are rising, that things are coming closer to a, a time of great change. And many people are changing. But what I can understand from these many past life regressions is that their past lives, many of the ones that I read, their past life re, uh, uh, regressions, were important to their life at today and helpful for clearing out some of the problems that were they were dealing with in their life and taking away some of the blockages that they had in their life. So, yes, speaking to the future, I say that if you get a past life regression, before you even go in to do such a thing, because it is important that you bring through the greatest past lives possible to effect and to bring forth the greatest value in this life, make sure that you speak and pray that the, the greatest of these past lives will come through to give you value in this life, to bring value to this life and to unblock it and to clear it in every way possible so that you may move forward dynamically. And prosperously and do your mission the way it should be done not to say that many of you are not working through and making sure that your missions are being done but some of you are challenged every step of the way i hear of many people that are have been almost completely destroyed by some outside influences and it is sad for me to think that they will not complete their mission because of it. But we are doing as much healing and sending as much healing to our planet as possible. And this is something that we will continue to do. And as far as your this the light of your future is concerned, we are here to help you to achieve all that is necessary. Thank you. Is there any other question? Safira has a question. Go ahead, Safira. Greetings. Hello, Dolores. Greetings. My name is Safira. Yes. So my question, I have a few questions. Um, I'm one of those people who have, and there's always been an attempt, always been an attempt to crush me down my whole life. And yet I've always known I have a great deal of power. Um, is this, from your experience, a matter of um, thing like a karma? Like I've done things in my past lives that were so um, horrendous <laughs> that. No, listen carefully. It can be a part of that. Some of your past lives can influence this life. Absolutely, there is no question. But remember. As you are growing, I know that I see that he is telling me that you had a very tumultuous childhood, and that has affected how your thought processes have been in your life. Now it is time to reevaluate what that has done to you and why it has affected you the way it has. There are many lessons to be learned there, and now it is time for you to turn the tables. It is time for you to uh, say, I'm no longer defeated. I'm no longer that person that sees all this damage in myself, but I am clearing that out. 
and I know you don't. You, I, I'm just uh, reiterating something that you, your soul is saying to you. Am I correct? Uh, yes, and my question, I, I didn't really mean to make it personal. I was, I was going to also add that um, the, the restoration of, or the understanding of past lives, it has to do with karma, like resolving karma, or... Um, you come into this life with a, a new, a, a newness. Mm -hmm. You create your karma in this life. Karma from past lives is just that. You can go back and change the karma in past lives, but you you have a new karma coming into this one. You are fresh, you are clean, and you whatever affects you in this life creates the karma for this life. Now, looking back at past lives, you can do regressions that can clear out karmas from past life that will maybe help you in this life because you may have aches and pains from past lives, such as uh, you were beat up or you had your head chopped off or something of this nature, some negative thing happened to you in past lives that carries over as a pain or a, or a thought process or uh, some kind of stigma that you can be, that can be removed by going through these past lives and healing them. There is someone here that has had great healing by going through past lives. Um, and it changed their life completely. Did it not? It did. Yes. From that moment on, they were changed because it had been something very horrific and it needed to be forgiven. It needed to be addressed. And after it was addressed and forgiven, and the weight was lifted, things changed. Directions changed. You see, these things can put little signs in your way saying this is the way I should go, but it may not be correct because it is a karma from a past life. Uh, but it is not the karma from this life. This life has its own karma. Okay. okay. I had... I had life regression when I was some years ago and I was a prison guard and I was very cruel to one of the prisoners and when I was laying on a slab dying I was unrepentant and I understood that the person who was abusing me uh, in my childhood was that person who I had abused myself and this takes away some of the um, heaviness of what happened it's like okay well I did it and now it's being done to me. So I guess this is part of the value of past life regression, would you say, correct? Did you forgive yourself for all of those things? I think so. I don't remember, but I think so. If you, if you did not forgive yourself, forgive yourself and forgive those, because you have to forgive yourself first before you can forgive anyone else. Because in that, in that particular situation, you, God has forgiven you. Now you must forgive yourself for doing the things that you did because that still weighs on you as a personal uh, thing. And once you forgive yourself, then you can forgive everyone else. And you need to do all that forgiveness work because it does change how you are looking at yourself, it changes how you are looking at others. Because there are others in your life, if you still feel there are others torturing you, if you still feel that there are others that are weighing on you, you need to forgive yourself and then forgive them because you need a fresh start in your forward motion. I see that you are moving forward. I see that there is some pain still. And that's why I mentioned this. You mm -hmm. have been very hurt by many people. And this is a time where you must look with unconditional love at everybody and yourself. Remember, you're part of this unconditional love. Without it in within you, you cannot share it. 
and I know that I'm making this personal to you, but there are many people out here that need to hear this as well. This is not just for you. Mm -hmm. This is for everyone because there are many that have not forgiven themselves and drag around that guilt inside. And they need to forgive themselves so that they can look outward and forgive all those people that they have that have made them feel that way because many times people feel guilty because of what others say and do to them and they have to to forgive themselves and know that god loves them and forgives them and then they can forgive those around them thank you uh, is there a particular person on the earth that you work with now that would be um, a great... My daughter. Oh, your daughter. Oh, of course. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes. There was somebody named Alba. I don't remember her last name. I um, work with her as well, but I work mostly with my daughter. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I work with many others. Mm -hmm. When they call on me to for different things, I go, I go to them and help them. But my daughter and I are very connected, and she is continuing my work. Okay. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Is there any other questions? I have a question. There is a question in the room. Sure, go right ahead. So Dolores, I just wanted to ask you, I'm going through some difficult times right now physically. Yes. Is there anything that I can do to turn that around? Okay. Because yes. it's really starting to bring me down. Okay. Physicality can, physicality can affect the spirit, the emotions, and all things that are there. There is a lesson to be learned on how to overcome the physicality. Now, you're looking at it in a way that you see that it holds you back. Your physicality holds your back. But it shouldn't. Let me explain why. Your spiritual and your emotions are what are can overcome your physicality, actually. You must seek that your physicality become less. Look at, let me use Jesus as an example. He was a strong man until he was beaten almost to death and then had to drag a cross up a hill and then was hung on it. But he did not let the physicality of all that negativity that happened to the body affect the spirit because it was separate. He separated it into a loving to his loving father he brought that spirit into a greater place that could overcome the physicality in some ways now i'm not saying that you're going to that you are like jesus in 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 that way but i am saying that it is an example of how spirituality does overcome the physical another example of this is the Buddhist monks that actually translate into the, another, uh, another uh, um, Teraha. Their spirit changes their body. Their spirit changes their body. It actually dissolves the body because the body is not as important as the spirit and not as important as the how you, your emotions are. You understand you can overcome pain. There are many that can overcome pain with their spirit. And this is how what you must learn about this world. It is so physical and so harsh, so uh, dim, uh, very rough for many people because uh, this uh, many of the the uh, anomalies that happen to them or the things that happen to them are physical. They're beat up. Their their bodies are full of disease and things of this nature. But it is that the spirit can overcome these things. And it, is there not healing for the body? 
There is healing with faith. If God chooses to, to bring you to that place. But remember, you and God have to be in agreement with that. You and God have to agree on what is happening to your physicality. You and God agree on that. Well, I have a question. I, don't know. Yes. Um, I was told by God that I'm from the fifth dimension. I came here to help with the ascension. Yes, and you are. And a part of it is people like that get diseases and stuff like that. Of course. And it's like, a why? <laughs> yes, it's, it is to learn lessons, to show, to uh, overcome things. Not everyone will learn these lessons. Not everyone knows or believes that God can actually do that. But it is true that you are put here and you are given challenges mm -hmm. for many different reasons. And some people never will be healed because it's not the will of God. Mm -hmm. He needs them to be that way for a particular reason. I have no idea why. But the thing is, when people look at you, you are holding the light of the spirit and they see your challenges, but they see that you are moving forward. You, you have great healing energy. You have great light within you. This is a good example to the world. You see that? You're welcome. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Ava. Go ahead, Ava. Ava. Yes. Hi, Dolores. Thank you for speaking to us. It's actually quite interesting what you are saying. Um, I have a personal question at that time, but uh, could be also take as a general question. Um, I am right now going through a breakup. Seems seems like an annual breakup, which really just <laughs> comes back with same person, and I really hope to move on uh, but honestly that's a very difficult um state to be as emotionally as well physically it's so draining um do you have any adv um, advice for me or basically anybody yes. in this kind of situation all that right let me do let me tell you this you need to do a personal evaluation i think that it is it, you have actually done a personal evaluation, but that doesn't make this decision any easier. And the reason is you are, you feel dependent in some way on this person. You feel that they feed you positively in some way. Otherwise, you wouldn't stay there with them. They, they also feed you in a negative way, which is why you want to leave them. But listen carefully. Your personal strength is in God. It is not in this person. It is not in your household or your family or anything. Your strength is in God. And until you understand how strong he is with you, then this will be a challenge. But if you come to the understanding that God is there and you do not need to play games, if you will. You can do things in a greater way. You can see things in a greater light. Now, I know many of you are going, I know I tried that. It's not working for me. But you have to understand that Whenever I do past life regressions, I'm going to use this as an example. Whenever I did past life regressions, so much light came back. So much light after things had been forgiven. So much light when things had been cleared. So much light from these individuals. They were changed. They, they were able to move forward. They were able to open their eyes and say, you know, that was really holding me back and you have to see what's holding you back you absolutely know it it's difficult for you to admit however the the strength of god is your hope and the strength of god 
is your strength. <laughs> he is amazing and can bring you through this. Now, the, my other thing is this. Have you had some very serious conversations with, with this person and told them exactly how you feel? No. Not really. <laughs> I mean... That is also something of honesty that you must share. You see, if, if you are going to have a relationship with this person and you cannot be honest with them, cannot express yourself with them, then you know that there is something wrong. You must be able to say, this is exactly how I feel. This is how I feel about you. This is how I feel about myself. This is how I feel about the situation. You must be able to bear your soul to God as well as to this individual because if there is a relationship, there should be honesty. There should be truth and there should be uh, uh, transparency. I Trans hear you, but it's more like talking to a wall. I mean, I do express well, myself. In Tell a while, that wall everything that is you. Tell that wall all about how you feel and all about it is not a waste of time. Why? Let me tell you why it's not a waste of time. You are expressing to this individual exactly what it is that you need, how you need it, and all these things. And if you don't do it, you can't move on. Does that make sense to you? Listen carefully. You really can't move away from this person until you tell them exactly how you feel and exactly how it is because they won't understand and you will be racked with guilt you will be full of misunderstanding. You must do this. There is there is no way around it. So I must tell everything to Bum. That is yep. fascinating. I always thought I must tell everything to stay, not to move on. That's actually very interesting. No, you must tell him everything so that you can move on. Because what's keeping you there is guilt. Okay, well, thank you, and also thank you for reminding me about God, because I do not think about God on an ongoing basis. I think about my spiritual supporters, but not God. Thank I you. understand. But listen, it makes perfect sense what I said. You must be perfectly honest with them so that you may move on. The fact that you have not been honest with him and not shared everything that you feel makes you feel guilty toward him it's unfair for him not to know okay thank you i did not perceive it this way thank you you are welcome thank you um there's a question from within the chat from ecclesiastes uh 888 and uh the, he says greetings dolores and there's two questions uh did you get um did you get to meet beings from the central sun and then also the second question is, uh, do you visit your loved ones and others in the 3D reality? Do you come in a yeah, light orb? I'm with my daughter a lot, yes. She's in 3D reality. And I work with her because I she is continuing my work and I think that it's very valuable. And the other question is, I meet beings from everywhere up here, but they don't identify themselves necessarily as, beings from the center of the sun. But I can go there, being that I am in this realm, I can go and visit them in the center of the sun if I wish, yes. Okay, and the other question was, do you appear as, as an orb? I can. Okay. <laughs> it's a funny <laughs> question because um, you, once you have gone into the oversoul or heaven or whatever you want to call it, you can come back, but you have to come back as an orb in some ways because you are not part of this dimension. 
not part of this reality and that shields you from it. It keeps you in the same uh, density as you are here in my world, in heaven. So yes, to visit your planet, uh, it you do come in orbs, yes. Thank you for that. Um, there's no other questions on this side. I don't know if there's any questions in, in your room. I don't know. Uh, no questions. No questions. So I will move on. Okay. Thank you very much. It was very nice talking to you. And thank it you was nice you. talking to you. And thank you for your questions. I hope I was helpful. I think that you were. Thank you so much. Much love. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. One moment, please. Yeah. I felt you coming. Did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so you're one of the touchy feely ones. So, yeah. All right. One moment. I'm hugging you. You just don't know it. Yeah. All right. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Well, Welcome, Grendel. Is there anyone has any questions for Grendel? Of course they do. Of course they I do. do. Never requested. <laughs> yeah. I do. I do. All right. Okay, okay so, so Safira, hello. Hello, Grendel. Greetings. So there was some question about um, Corey Good saying that there's wars under the earth and yeah. um, other, other beings saying that no, there's not. Then there's the Agarthians, there's all kinds of, how do these people live under the earth? I, it's so hot, but I, I don't get that part, but I believe it. But what about all these wars and what is really going on under the earth, please? There are people living under your earth. There are, There's great caverns, there's great areas under the earth where they can live, but it's very deep. It's not just, and not just uh, right under the earth. It, it's very deep. So they have to, um, they do that because they've been here for a long, long time and they have been able to, uh, to grandfather themselves into the planet. But some of them are in other dimensions. So even if you break through into these caverns, you would not find them because you're in the third dimension and they are not. The Agarthans are in, in a different dimension, and some of the Draconians are in different dimensions. There are a few species that are in third dimension. Um, the golden people under the Himalayas can be in third dimension if they wish. There are those that, um, that are in third dimension, such as the Clares, which are in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. So just different things. There's no wars going on under the earth because it, there's just there. It, it's just not what's happening. It's there are different people coming into their own different species coming awake and helping with the ascension. But there, there's no war. Um, if there was a war, it would be stopped by all these tectonic plate movements and volcanoes because that would just destroy whatever is happening even if it's in another dimension it would it, that really affects the way that it is and mother earth is purging right now and bringing energies to the surface that were not there for many centuries so no wars happening under the earth it just doesn't make any sense right it just doesn't make any sense Thank you very much. And, um, I was told that I'm a guardian to a crystal skull, which is not unearthed yet. Um, how many crystal skulls have still not been discovered? And a few. I, you know what? That's really hard because I can, 
I can sense the crystal skulls around the earth and many of them are found. I'd say probably 10 out of the 13. Now, many people think there's only 12, but there's a controller and that's ha that one has been unearthed, but there's 13 altogether. There's 12 for the each of the stargates and there's a skull that goes in the middle for the control. Okay, so if almost everyone has been discovered, I thought I think about ten of them. Yeah, I thought there was like an extra thirteen, on, uh, as well. I thought I just said that. Yeah, there's thirteen. I mean, no, I mean another set of thirteen. <laughs> uh, no, there's not another set on thirteen on this planet. There's a set of thirteen at the other end where the stargates are. A go to. There's all I, kinds of other sets, but not on this planet. So, does that mean I would be a guardian to the two that have not yet been found? Three. There's three okay. not yet found. Okay, so I would be a guardian to one of those three? Correct. I see. Well, I, I'm not an archaeologist and I don't have any idea how I would even. Is it necessary to actually? Being a guardian doesn't mean that you'll ever even see the crystal skull that you're guarding. You're just putting energy around it and keeping it safe for now so it doesn't fall into the, the wrong hands. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll, I have more questions, but I'll let other people go. Thank you. Yeah. Is there more questions? Yes. Ava has a question. Go ahead, Ava. Hi, Grindel. Um, I have questions actually about you. I'd like to ask, where yeah. is your physical body? Can you be in several places at once? And then what is actually the part of you which is in gym or another person? I don't really, it's kind of interesting to know. Well, my, my body is in, on my planet. My astral is in gym. I cannot be in more than one place at, the, at uh, the same time, not usually, unless I'm using technology. Now, with technology, you can do that. It's not very comfortable. But I, I don't usually do that because, you know me, I like my comfort. So, uh, but I do visit in astral to this planet. And I do, when I come to gym, it's through the chakra systems. And I am using technology to do that. Uh, in, and I'm also using um, a couple other things. But um, I am, my body is on my planet. And how often do you get back to your body? Uh, I don't spend much time in my body anymore because I work on the earth as a walk-in uh, to a, a, a politician in Israel. But um, I do spend some time in my body when there's nothing else going on in my family. I spend some time then with my family. God, God bless them yeah okay wonderful thank you so much you're welcome yeah my family yeah they're just overjoyed to see me what are you doing here <laughs> i have a question yeah okay go ahead all right back to the crystal skulls i'm barbara hi barbara uh, back to the crystal skulls there's a lady in arizona claims that she has one of the crystal skulls that she um yeah she does is this confirm yeah, she has one. Okay. Yeah, there's there's crystal skulls all over the place. Arizona, there's one in California. There's uh, a few in Europe, China, Japan. Uh, there's one in Indonesia. There's one in um, uh, what is that place called? Yeah, Malaysia. Okay. But they they move they move around. They um there's a couple in a there's one in a museum even. Wow. So that's yeah, there's, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I was just checking. Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there's a question from in the, uh, in the chat. It's from Peter. He, 
PQ, he said, I once asked Grendel to blend with me energetically. He felt a powerful reptilian body. Can you comment on that? I can I can come to you if you're a channeler. I can I can get into your body, yes. Now, you see, I come in astral, but it's actually because of the technology I use, they call it astral hologram kind of thing. So I actually can feel some of the things that are going on in the body. I can control the hands. Yeah, I know, weird. Uh. But anyway, um, I can control some things, the arms, the legs. I can, my tail, I feel my tail inside the body. It has to stay inside the body. So that can be uncomfortable. But yes, I can, I can merge with you if you wish. If you're a channeler, if you call on me, um, yeah, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I don't see any other questions. All so right. Any questions for Grendel? I have a question. It's Lucia. Okay, thanks. Yes. Lucia. Hello. Hello, Grendel. Greetings. Um, I'd like to talk politics just for a second, not very long. Just uh, there's been some changes with, uh, in Africa uh, yesterday. I don't know if you know about what I'm talking about. Um, I, I, I think I heard about it. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm talking about the changes that happened um, concerning the, uh, the French uh, international organization. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I and, understand what you're talking about. Yep. Okay. Could you explain to me the impact of the choice of the nominee, please? Yes. The... All right, they had a Canadian nominee and they had a a nominee from I'm, I think it was Zambia, is that where No, it was? it's it's Rwanda. Rwanda, that's right. But um the thing is about this is that the French have decided to go with Ro the candidate from Rwanda because this gives France more of a a a, a control of what happens in Africa. If they would have chosen the Canadian candidate, they would not have nearly as much control. So Absolutely. they're looking to to build more control in the African uh, African countries. So that's why they chose that representative. You see, that was very smart on their part. They do not lose any control. And this person that they chose is a weak leader. He, he is not as strong as the Canadian leader. The Canadian leader was actually very well versed and understood every parts of the policies. But the Rwanda candidate, they will have to nurse him along a little bit. And this actually helps them make more decisions. Is there and a lot of noise going on or what? Shenanigans. Please be quiet. <laughs> okay, um, I'm aware of all that, what you said. Could you expand on this? Just what, what will be the repercussions now? Because really, I mean, the, the world is changing. And um, I, I'm just wondering long term. I mean, I, I realize there's a spiritual war going on. There's, there's so many changes in politics. But it seems to be very slow. And I'm just wondering... Well, um, yes, they, France wants to get more control in the African areas for many different reasons. There's a lot of resources there that have not been mined. There's a lot of things there that need attention. Their governments there are not as strong. Their, their leaders are, uh, are really more about getting into power so that they don't have to work hard and they're, they're not really about the people all the time. This is France's opportunity to look like a hero down the road. And so they are going to use that for every bit of popularity that they can get. Uh, they will be the heroes to some of these places. Okay. All right. And, and that makes sense you, to you. And yeah, also no, they will bring back industry. They're going to talk to these 
representatives that they have their uh, influence over <coughs> about industry and what they need to do with it and how to organize it better. These third world countries do not understand big business, but they do. Yes. And okay, so very this well. is an opportunity for them to take some control. And so basically, um, it, it's just keeping the same, the status quo. And it, yes, it's just, they're going to make it, they're going to make it seem like this guy is brilliant. And they're going to make it seem like this guy is doing so much, but it's really them that are doing a lot of this work because he's going to be somewhat of a puppet and he's there. He's going to take their advice because it's good. Their advice will be good. It will be positive. It will influence the people, but they will slowly creep in with their own people and their own industries and different things of that nature. So look for that. Yes. Yeah. And and because the way the nomination is it, just there was the the race to it, it is it, it was just not done in ordinary in an ordinary manner. I mean, we thought the Canadian nominee would win, and then it anyway. It, it was no the, it, the very last minute, and I'm just wondering the way it was done. Did it open the eyes? Did, did they it, what? Well, did it somehow kind of open the eyes to the, this, this corruption that we're talking about, basically? Oh, um, not to Africa. Africa is not aware of all the different political scenarios that happened beforehand. They are only aware that their guy got the support. And they're going, yay, our people win, yay. But... What has happened is the French actually wins. Mm -hmm. So okay, yes. Very well. I don't now to in Canada, more. they will notice the political problem. They will notice the political corruption there to some extent because they already have. And but they have no say about it because mm -hmm. their part, their guy didn't win. That's right. Okay, very well. So Thank you, Grindel. A perfect plot by France. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Don has a question. Don, yay. Hello, Grindel. Welcome. Greetings. Greetings. Uh, I noticed that there's a ship, a uh, naval buildup in the waters above uh, Venezuela. Uh, yeah. Can you yeah. comment on that, please? All right. You know... If you have been watching the history of Venezuela within the last eight to ten months, yes. have you? Yes. Well, then you know what they're, that this buildup of ships is about. There's a, a lot of, a, there was a takeover of Venezuela, um, in, but it was a very quiet one. Uh, and it, do you understand that? Yes, I do. It was a quiet takeover of Venezuela, and a lot of things changed. A lot of people were changed out, and things happened. You don't even, you're not even hearing about it. But financially, a lot of people got very wealthy. Mm -hmm. did, did you realize that? Yes, I did realize that. Um, so what is happening is that there is uh, a disagreement with how this was done and who got wealthy. Mm -hmm. And so there is an armada, if you want to call it that, uh, right outside of there, and they're threatening some of the people there quietly, mm -hmm. quietly threatening Venezuela to uh, extort some money, drugs, and other things. <coughs> Okay. Now, you, you may seem like it's all on the up and up, but it is not. I know. So, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much, Grindel. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Uh, Christine has a question. Go ahead, Christine. And do you need some water? Does Jim need water? Oh, uh, yeah, he probably does. I talk like an old man. 
Yeah, okay. Well, can you please feed the the channel some water? So yeah, yeah. Continue to hear your gravelly voice. <laughs> they better, better. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you. Christine, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Blessings to you, Grindel. Blessings. Um, going back to the African, the French uh, maneuvering into Africa. Yes. Again, um, is it going to be like Haiti where um, where they uh, just don't teach the Haitians anything and then suddenly withdraw and leave them? No, no, no. That would not be good for this particular situation. Let okay. me explain. Uh, Haiti is sort of out there in the middle of nowhere, whereas Rwanda and all the countries around in the African area are all connected and they talk to each other, all right? So yes, yes. If, if France does something r that they feel is shady, that news will get everywhere. So they are going to treat this very carefully. They're going to move cautiously but infiltrate quietly in a way but get some control and gain some industry and do some things yeah but is it going to be um pretty much like what's happening here in the u.s where the education system is dumbed down are they gonna not support education with uh, well, no actually I am not sure of that. They have not been plain. They have not come through as saying what they're going to do in that situation. However, one of the running, one of the things that the candidate wanted was greater educational values, which is not a problem. Any little thing is an improvement for Africa. Um, yeah. So they will improve it, I'm sure, but how much that is to be remain to be seen. What about um, because they're very clannish? Yeah, um, yeah. Is, is a lot of that brutality between clans and mm. villages? Well, villages, clans, whatever. Is well, it is going to be cut down? It already has. It already has. Um, Coming into the modern era, there's technology slowly being fed into Africa, and that's taking away some of the attention of, of clans and things of that nature. They're starting to say, oh, what's this? Let's, let's look at this. Like, uh, well, I am not sure what this is. Uh, how do you use it? What, do you, what is this? This is, did the gods drop this here on us or what? what? But anyway, um, they're, they're starting to get more people coming in and teaching them about technology and different things. Not every, not every clan is privy to this yet, but it is little by little going to start, they're starting to educate the, the people of Africa of, about technology and business and the cities are becoming more modern as well. So when someone <coughs> from a tribe moves or gets close to a city, they're like, well, what's going on here? So uh, they're starting to get educated to different things at this time. My, my um, worry is um, the brutality to women, especially. Um, well, yeah, it's, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of that, but it's actually still starting to cut down a little. Okay, um, only because if the women remain um, brutalized, then um, they're not really raising their consciousness up. I'm worried about the consciousness. The you know, it it'll be all right eventually, but right now it's still third it world. Yeah, there's still a lot of third world thought processes. But you have to understand, it's being infiltrated. There's a lot of raw material there that needs uh, a lot of minerals and oil and many different things that is in the ground in 
in Africa that has not even been touched because these countries have no knowledge of how to get to it. So or they're just starting to learn that their country can mine these things. So of course, in South Africa, there's mining diamonds. And they're doing all kinds of industrial things, but not in the the main bulk of the country and the uh, the continent. Is there um, is there going to be the um, ruining the environment as well? You know, yes, like they, there. I'm sure some of that will occur. Yes. Okay. I worry about the women. I worry about the animals, the environment, the trees. You know, I I just I'm well, hoping yeah. it's intelligent. Is, little yes. by little, it will become industrialized, just as every part of the other every other part of the world is, but it's not there yet. Well, hopefully they'll use modern things to um, not yeah. affect the environment as much. I understand, you know, but you know, they're the pretty greedy. Thing. It's more about greed than it is about cons conservation or ecology. Sending energy there um, would help. Am I Absolutely. And okay. I have, being that I am someone in the government of Israel, I can also give my two cents to whoever. Okay. Thank you, Grindel. Blessed be. Blessed be. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ch uh, Safira has a question. Yeah. Hi, Grindel. I'm, my mind is back on Canada. Yeah. The country itself, it seems like so much can be going on and nobody would really know about it. It's so vast and there's so much land which is not occupied. Um, do you know which major extraterrestrial groups are building up there? Are there any building up? Um, yeah, there. You see, in the northern part, where like the Falkland Islands above England, um, Iceland, Green, uh, the Greenland area, the northern parts of Canada. These are areas, Siberia, where a lot of alien activity is, happens. It's not their favorite area to work in. They would prefer to work in South America or, or um, because that area is very familiar to them and they've done a lot of, they have a lot of history in South America. But if you go, if you're looking for spotting UFOs and things of that nature, you will. The very north part of the world is a uh, very popular at this time because it's not under surveillance for one thing. It's mm -hmm. there's not very much population, mm -hmm. and it is somewhere where they can go freely and do do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And the the Canadian um, premier. Or president, yeah. Uh, what is his agenda? I I don't really trust him for some reason <laughs> because, he, like this whole situation that just happened that you explained about the Rwanda candidate, it seems that like was the thing he is. It, he, yeah, he kept it under his belt until the last moment. He must have known about it. What, what was that about? Well, he was quietly fighting it. He, of course, he wanted his candidate to win. However, the French promised him some stuff, so he kept his mouth shut. I see. Well, what role does Canada play in the world, especially with what's going on in the Middle East? Does it, is it playing a role there as well? Trade. There's all Trade is what Canada is about right now, making okay. money and trading. And politi politically being uh, independent, and to do their own thing. That is where Canada is at now. They want to earn as much money as possible to uh, build up their uh, educational systems. You see, um, the educational systems in the eastern part of the country are fine. But when you get to the middle the and the west coast and some of those areas over there, 
their educational systems are old and decrepit. Mm -hmm. They really need to update their educational systems all across the the country. They're they're more updated in Quebec, Montreal, Toronto area. That's fine. But when you get to Saskatchewan or somewhere like that, their their educational systems are lacking. Mm. Okay. They consider themselves an ally to Israel as America does? They do not consider themselves allies to anyone. Oh, really? Really? Okay. <laughs> They're independent. They're neutral. So being I... neutral, they have no allies. Not truly. Okay. In theory, they are uh, aligned with thought processes of the United States and uh, and England and etc. But legally and bindingly, they are not. They do what they wish. They can send troops if they want, but they, they really don't have a very strong army. It's not mm -hmm. something that they they concentrate on. They, mm -hmm. you don't hear about the Canadian army uh, because <laughs> it's it's very small. They're 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 never been threatened with a great war or anything of that nature. So they mm -hmm. have not. They remain neutral, so they don't have to deal with that. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much. That was very interesting. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, question. Yeah. Question here. Yeah, there's a new uh, now um, nine mile crack in Antarctica. Do you know what that's about? A crack in Antarctica? There's everything is going on in Antarctica. It's the place to be. Yeah, but anyway, uh, they're they're actually what is happening in Antarctica is this: there's a ship buried very deeply in Antarctica. They know it's there. They're trying all kinds of methods, methods to get to it without destroying it. So that's very difficult because they don't want to use a lot of explosives. They don't want to use this, that, and the other thing. Uh, but they are getting closer to it. But as they are, they are using some dynamite and some explosives, it's causing some damage. But there's other things going on that I can't discuss with you that um, is affecting Antarctica in many different ways. So they're doing. There's a lot of research teams down there right now, and they're all hush hush, and they don't talk to each other because they're from different countries, and Antarctica is not really claimed by any country. So it's a it's a place unto itself. So nobody really owns antarctica so everybody can go there um unless you know something that i don't but i don't think that anybody owns or has claimed it for themselves saying hey this is good land but uh it is a place of great uh a great amount of scientific work right now yes is, is there anything to do with the global warming where the scientists have recently discovered that we are much further into the global warming than previously uh realized yeah. yeah absolutely um this has to do with global warming and the fact that the way that uh be you see global warming is a natural thing and but we have been putting uh or you have been putting all these different gases and uh things into the air. So it's changing what the global warming really is going to look like. And it may turn it into an ice age. It may move through the global warming to a, such a quick degree that it brings an ice age. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Because it's being helped along. It's not a natural global warming. It is natural to a point and then you are adding to it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so it's pushing it really fast. Your global warming is going to go really fast and it may cause 
other things, perhaps an ice age, perhaps global warming to the point of melting the poles. That could be a very, very bad thing. But they're trying to control it. They're trying to read it. I'm not allowed to tell you what I see because that would be uh, not fair. But uh, the thing is, they're really studying everything down there because all the clues are there. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. Don is a question, then Sheer. All righty. Okay, uh, Grendel, I was wondering, uh, recently there were some um, lasers fired from the rings of Saturn into deep space. Can you comment on this? There are other life forms in this solar system, and they are, uh, they are more advanced than you are. Mm -hmm. um, in, as you know, the Venusians are more advanced than you are. Mm -hmm. The underground Martians are more advanced. The people that are behind the moon, some, uh, many of them, well, all of them are more advanced. Uh, the, uh, there's uh, moons around Saturn that have life on them, and, uh, and they're protected by uh, artificial coverings. Yeah. And uh, there's a stargate out there, too, mm -hmm. as you know. Yes. So, and there's a black hole. But it is actually more of a, it's more of a uh, wormhole. It's not a black hole. Mm -hmm. It's a wormhole that you can move through to an, another galaxy. And it actually moves on, on the other side. You can distribute yourself to one of three places. It moves, you have to wait for the movement of the tail of it, but it's, it can, they can, uh, tech, not, use technology to move it to where they need it to go so they can get to one of three galaxies. Okay, and I, my other question was um, with concerning that ship in uh, Antarctica, does it have a yes. portal on board and is there, is there anybody in there? It, they are long past, but they are there. But it, is, it, was a, it was actually something, it was a crash Mm -hmm. And it was many, 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 many centuries ago, and it has buried itself in the in the Antarctic terrain. Mm -hmm. So there are no survivors, but they are there in the ship. Okay. I wouldn't want to open that can. Okay. Sure. I was just worrying about uh, transporting the ship out of there. Um. There are species that can do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can uh, demolecular. Oh, how do you say that? Demolecularize them and reformulate formulate them somewhere else. However, this is not what they're going to do. The galactic government said, "Don't touch it." They're not going to touch it. Okay, I just wanted. Thank you very much. I'll move on. You're welcome. Bye bye. Thank galactic you. government says. Hands off. If the humans want to take care of it, that's fine. But they know too much about it, and they say no one can touch it. So uh, that I don't even know, to be honest with you. Sure. I, there has been several speculations that they are Orions, that was, or, or Andromedans. That is this. Those are the two. Uh, speculations that could be true. I don't believe it's Uyil. I don't believe it's uh, Syrian or Lyran. The only two that it could be is Orion or Andromeda. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Sheer has a question. Go ahead, Sheer. Unless there's something going on still in your room. If there's someone in the room, but go ahead, Sheer, and we'll now do is it Barbara? Yeah, Barbara. Okay, Barbara. Okay. Go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Hey, what's up, Grindo? Greetings. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Next year, it's a uh, year of election here in Israel. And it seems that um, many different uh, parties are trying to 
drive us into another conflict. Like you're always very hard. Huh? Yeah. You're always the key to conflict. Israel is always the key. Yeah, but since it's going to be an election year, it seems that they want to have a conflict in order to boost their votes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me how you're going to see the next election? Like, I'm like trying to cause no conflicts because all the... When they get involved in a conflict, they lose sight of the of the purpose of moving forward in with the people. And um, I think their attention needs to be on the the people right now because they've really sort of ignored their people to us to some extent, and they need to get back on board with that. Is there way, uh, any way to shake them up? Like, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. Well, I'm going to start a new semester uh, in a week. So if there's any conflict, don't let them uh, take me to reserve in duty because I will go berserk. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see what I can do, Bear. Yeah. Thank All you. right, Barbara. There's a question, a question in your room. Bar Go ahead, Barbara. Good question. Yeah. I keep seeing that there's an anomaly on the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Is that a ship or is that just rocket? There are ships in the bottom of a lot of seas. There okay. is a ship in the Baltic Sea. There are ships in uh, the Dead Sea as well. Okay. And most, most sea areas or ocean areas, there are ships hiding in the ocean because they can hide easily there and come out in any place uh any place in the north that they want so and they can travel very quickly yeah. across it through the ocean now i know there's got to be ufos in our little lake here ontario lake of course yeah. they're always seen all the time yeah they're seen yeah and who is that um the ones that are in the great lakes yes of those are Orions. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. They're preparing. Uh, they're also Pleiadians. There's also some Pleiadians. Okay. The Pleiadians are preparing a, um, a big comeback sometime in the future. And he's laughing. Because he already knew that, right? <laughs> no, the other one I want to ask you. Years ago. Well, yeah, years yeah. Ago, yeah. I saw a ship. I know part of it was underneath, I see ships all the time, underneath the clouds, and it's like a bark ship of square. Yeah. So what was the top of the ship? I know it's huge or on top, and who was it? Um, those were the AIs. AIs. If, there, if it was a square ship, that is that is an AI ship. But that they must have accidentally come here because right they're right. actually not allowed in this area. So. Okay. So they might have only stayed for a few minutes. Thank if they were detected, they were sent out. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Christine has a question. Uh, Christine. Yeah. Hi. I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to ask you um, the um, tilting of our axis. Is that has that been halted? Um, Yes, yes, the uh, tilting on the axis has been halted. It went out a certain way, and then they took it back in a little bit. I know your governments have um, said that it's only a mile, or it's only a very short uh, distance that it's out of uh, out of alignment. But it's 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 a little more than that. They're not reporting it that it's that it's more out of line because they don't want anybody to freak out. But it is one of the reasons why your weather is so bad is that when the uh, the axis is out of alignment, it changes the Earth's weather. It does. It can't help it. It's, it just does. Um, I was wondering, um, I know in the past, archaeologists, scientists, um, teachers in um, astronomy, so on and so forth, they've been quieted or um, told not to talk.
talk about things that might um, frighten um, the populace. Oh, yeah. Many people have been silenced, yes. Yeah. Um, do you think um, the health, uh, these doctors who are into the health, the scientists who are improving our health, um, I understand that many of them have been disappearing or they've been dying or is this type of assassination going to stop soon? I can't answer that because I know that they that will continue for a little while yet. Okay. But I cannot tell you who's there's so many different associations connected to this. Yeah. Everybody's everybody on earth is silencing somebody because they don't want certain truths about their particular company or their particular person to be uh, exposed. Well, um, what's kind of frightening is um, now it's being taken to everyday people. Like um, I'm aware that um, they can now uh, do um, things like with the um, cell, stem cell, they can regrow limbs and organs and th things like this, but um, yes. only little peeps have been coming out and then there's complete silence on that. And um, now yeah. um, our uh, well, they found, it, found this. Yes, with stem cell, they are uh, finding they can regrow limbs and things. But when they're doing this, when they're using these stem cells, it's um, waking up a different part of the brain that was asleep before, because in your future, you will be able, uh, sometime in your evolution, th that is something normal that will be able to happen. You will be able to regrow limbs and, and things of that nature, but that's not for a distant future but they're seeing as they're working with stem cells now if they are working with them in the body parts of the brain are activated that were not activated before and so this is why there's such hush hush is because it's not only that they're growing new uh, parts of the body but they're already right. also stimulating parts of the brain that should not be stimulated yet and they're getting some very uh, interesting reactions to these stem cell activations. Well, what I had read was the stem cell, when it's injected into the spine, it's all, it, it goes to exactly where it's needed. It knows where it's needed. Exactly. And then yeah. It, yes, yeah. so it's sort but, of like a... But what yeah. is that? That is stimulating the portion of the brain that knows where it's needed. It's put into the spine, but are, are you kidding? It goes to the brain as well. Yes, it's not yes. going to bypass the brain and go, Ooh, sorry, I don't want to talk to you. But it's going to um, stimulate that part of the brain, and the brain is going to know exactly where to send that, uh, that uh, DNA, that stem cell DNA. Another portion of this of this shutting down of information especially on facebook is um what's frightening me is now uh president trump is demanding of the facebook people that they um identify all facebook members who are speaking negative about him yeah so, well, that would be a lot of people. He wouldn't be able to have them all hit. But, but um, the thing is, he is yeah. just a control freak. That's all. He'll he'll not get what he needs, really. Well, I'm kind of concerned about if this if Facebook goes actually goes into this. Does this mean also oh. they're going to start going into controlling the information on things like um, that the chem chem the Chemical companies uh, don't want us to know about drugs and the advancement of self, you know, uh, stem cells. And stuff like that. Do not worry about it. it. There are so, the thing is, yes, there are so many millions of people that are not on Facebook that say bad things about Trump. There are many people that are not on Facebook. 
And the ones that do say something bad about him on Facebook, it's still a free country. And you can say whatever you want. He may know who you are, but what is he going to do about it? That's, I think, I think the worrisome, especially since he's stacking the Supreme Court. Yeah. I, I don't think they're going to come after you for Facebook from the Supreme Court. Nah, I, he has so much more to worry about than that. Don't okay. worry. Don't worry. Um, Brenda, we are over time. Uh, we're over. We're over. Yeah, time. All right. I'll go. I'll go. Okay. There's two more questions. Uh, Marlene has a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Brenda. Yeah. Uh, my question is concerning uh, Orion. If you can expand. Uh, there's mayhem uh, being caused up there. Is there anything that you can tell, about, tell us about what's going on? Yeah. All Please? right. Orion, you, re you realize that the Pleiadians are, are starting to make a comeback. They have a lot of people on Earth representing their people because they feel like they are in charge of the ascension in many ways. They have been given that responsibility by the galactic uh, uh, prophecies and things. Well, the Orions uh, feel that since they are responsible for many of the pyramids and many of the stargates and many of these things, that they should actually be as right alongside the Pleiadians doing whatever they're doing. But the Pleiadians are saying, no, 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 that we're, we'll take care of this. So on the Orion world, there's a lot of controversy about how to get involved with uh, this particular portion of the Ascension. So it is not a, a big battle. It's more political. And there, there are some outside forces that are causing trouble there. So there is unrest. You can feel that uh, unrest there, but it's not necessarily fighting as far as bombs and things of that nature. It's, it's more of a negative uh, energy kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's what I was referring to. It's, I felt and still feel that it's, more than just negative stuff going on. It's more like a uh, hands-on. Well, um, <laughs> there are a few that are taking action, but it's not, it has not elevated yet. It's still in a, in a, a, a low form, a skirmish form. There are some that have taken action. Yes. I cannot go into it. That's their their thing. Mm -hmm. But what have you uh, noted? Any per, something in particular that you want to share? Um, <clears throat> no, I will leave it at that for now. All I right. Just, I just yes. my question was for the people, the listeners, and people on the call to know what's going on up there. Yeah, they're they're definitely having some problems. There's no question, and Thank it, you. it might escalate. I'm tr I'm trying to put a positive spin on it. Yes, but there's um, but there's definitely a lot of people that are in, in that area that are fighting back with the Palladian Pleiadian representatives that are there. Thank you for. Um putting it out there for us. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we have another question in the chat, but it's up to you if you want to continue. If it's the last one, I'll take it. Okay, this will be the last question. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the difference? <laughs> this is from, uh, this is going to be a big answer. Uh, what is the question, what is the difference between a black hole a wormhole and a stargate. It's from Fiona. Well, stargates, it's clear to see that they're technology. That is, they are made. Star, stargates are created and they're, it, they're technology. Whereas a wormhole is a natural function, a natural part of the galaxy and the universe. And so same with the black hole. 
The difference between a wormhole and a black hole is you can travel through a wormhole, whereas a black hole is a con is matter concentrating within itself. And you can take 10,000 pounds and put it into a speck in a black hole. That's the difference. A wormhole is a channel that moves, that can you can move through to get from one part of the galaxy to the other. But a, the, the thing is, uh, a, a, a black hole you can't travel through. A black hole is a, a collapsed star, and it is pulling energy tightly into itself, and it's sucking in energy. Does that make sense to you? It's sucking in all the things around it. Any kind of matter, it will pull in. It, it has that strong of a pull because it has, you see, once you get, uh, once you get so much matter, a collapsed star, its gravity is very intense and it's pulling that in. So your the gravity center is getting greater and greater every minute. So in some ways, until it, uh, there is times when black holes will explode. So that's something completely different. Yes. All right. That was it. Yes. Thank you. That was Have it. a great day. Thank you so much. Much love to you. Thank you for coming. Thank Always you so much. Love Thank you. you. <laughs> All right, talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were too serious today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I gotta go. Better next time. Hello? 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 Thank oh. you. Hello. We went over and over. Hello. Hello. Welcome oh, back. Well, I'll say. Yeah. Um, who wants to say a final blessing? I'll say a blessing. I said Wendy. Yeah. yeah. Angie. Oh, okay. Wendy? Yeah. Angie yeah. and Wendy? Okay. Who's first? Uh, Wendy, are you are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Hey. You want to go yeah. first, Wendy. Hi. Sure, that'd be great. Okay. Malaki sana sharikila samoriana lahila kaniyama korupu pete sanedia la koliyamba koshela kavula koya shamila kisano se la kila kai. Shoshiakiliandorasewa so machine I can no cool up or you like a shit or so so she had a clear latilla locola la pia coya ashe ashe ania a halikia mahala namaste wonderful the energies of the universe and the energies of the earth come together in the heart to form love something that is necessary for us all to move forward Remember to love one another as you are doing your missions. It is not all about just the work, but it is about the understanding, the compassion, and the vision that you have for one another and support in all ways to, to bring things into the fullness that they must come to. I see our community as a community of love, Sometimes it gets out of sorts, but we bring it back together. But God knows that we are here for a single purpose in many ways. 
But that single purpose has so many directions and so many things that it can express. Love one to another is something that is necessary for this time so that we may do our jobs the best that we can and feel the support that we need. Without this support, it is so difficult to proceed. But we do feel that, and we do thank God for it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And then in your room, Angela. And Angela. As we look out into the heavens, we see so many of our friends waiting for us. It is a time of great excitement, for it grows near that we are going to be communicating in a greater way. Let us help you and pray for you and pray for us as well so that we may make the proper decisions at the right times. May God bless you and keep you and lift you up as a people so that you may move into this next realm with great ease. Oh, very good. All righty then. Thank okay, you, perfect. everybody. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah, and Thank next you. week, Jim will be back. So yes. we will see you next week. And Brian Sims and Logan will be with me here next yes. week. Awesome. Yeah. And um, I know you haven't seen them for a while, but they will be here. Perfect. Awesome. So, Have a great you. week, everybody. Thank you, Karen, for moderating so greatly. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the. Let me just get the announcements out. Uh, for everyone else, please be sure to check out the uh, the channeling group on Friday nights with Ian. That's uh, Friday afternoons, and you can find that on Hukalo Channeling Group on Facebook. It's free to join. If you'd like to become a member of Human Colony, go to hukalo.org forward slash webinars, and you can support us in the stuff that you're doing. Please click like on this video, and also if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I think that's it. So till next week. Thank you very much and much love to you. Y'all come back now here. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Will in the background. <laughs>